please pause the video and take the time to try the question before listening on. Now, of course, the question states that we have an elastic collision. And in any elastic collision, we can use the conservation of linear momentum. But before we can do that, what we need to do is to break the velocities of the shuffleboard disks into their x and y components. So for the orange disk, we have labeled the x component with a rightward vector and the y component with an upward vector. Given the 37 degree angle, we should be able to see that the velocity of the orange puck in the y direction can be represented as v naught f times the sine of 37. Notice the diagram labeled the velocity of the orange puck as v naught f, and that's where we're getting that v naught f here. The x direction can be labeled v naught f cosine of 37, so perhaps we can squeeze that in over here. Now, in a similar way, we can label the x and y components of the green disk. Notice the question labeled the final velocity of the green disk as v sub g f. So the x component of the final velocity of the green disk is going to be v sub g f cosine of 53, and the y component will be v sub g f sine of 53. Now that we've broken the final velocities into their x and y components, I think it's a good idea to eliminate the resultant velocities from the picture because we really just want to be focused on components when we analyze vectors. So we can safely erase the final velocity of the orange puck resultant vector and keep just the orange components that we came up with. And the same thing with the green disk. We can take away that resultant velocity and work just with the x and y components. We can now finally apply the conservation of linear momentum. We'll do so in the y direction first. We can begin by simply writing that the final momentum in the y direction will equal the initial momentum in the y direction, but then we can fill in some more elaborate expressions for those momenta. For the y direction, remember that we have a velocity vector pointing straight up for the orange puck and a velocity vector pointing straight down for the green puck. Because that velocity is pointing down for the green puck, that y component velocity will have to be negative when we plug it into the momentum equation. Also recall that momentum is simply the product of a mass and a velocity. So for example, for the orange puck and the y component, we would have to take the mass of the orange puck and multiply it by the y component final velocity. For the green puck, the same idea, but again, the velocity is downward and is therefore negative. As for the initial momentum in the y direction, take note that the orange puck is moving exclusively in the x direction, so there was no momentum in the y direction for the orange puck, and for the green puck, it's not moving at all, so there's certainly no momentum in the y direction for that puck as well. In other words, the total momentum initially in the y direction should be equal to zero. Now, the masses of the pucks were stated as being the same, so we don't need a separate label for the masses of the orange and green puck. We can simply use an arbitrary label of m. In fact, we can divide each term of the equation by m in order to cancel it out. Why don't we go ahead and add the VGF sine 53 over to the right side of the equation? We could then divide both sides by the sine of 53, and that's going to allow us to isolate the V sub GF term. And if you plug the sine of 37 divided by the sine of 53 on your calculator, you should get a result that is approximately equal to 0.754. So we can write v naught f times 0.754, and that's going to equal the v sub g f term. Now, we're going to just hang on to this result and use it in our next equation. And of course, that next equation will be conserving momentum, but this time in the x direction. For the final momentum in the x direction, we'll take note that the orange disk was moving in the rightward direction and therefore has positive momentum. The green disk is also moving in the rightward direction and has positive momentum. So we can fill in those momenta in the x direction, keeping both positive. For the initial momentum, we will notice that the orange disk is moving exactly along the x-axis, so it certainly has momentum in the x-direction, and it will be positive. The green disk is stationary, so it will not have any momentum, so we only have to include one momentum term on the right side of this equation. Notice that the velocity of the orange disk initially was 5 meters per second, so we have 5 right here. As before, mass appears in all the terms of the equation, so we can eliminate it. Now, what's nice about this equation, although it contains two unknowns, VOF and VGF, we recall that we came up with an expression earlier for VGF. So we can actually make a substitution whereby we take this term and plug it in right there for the VGF. Now, you can pick up your calculator and multiply 0.754 by cosine of 53. 
and you should get 0.454. So we can actually rewrite this block of terms here as just 0.454 VOF. The cosine of 37 is approximately 0.799, so we can rewrite this term as 0.799 VOF. And then of course we can add these like terms. And we get approximately 1.25 VOF is equal to 5, and then nicely we can divide both sides by 1.25 to solve for VOF. And when we do that, we can see that VOF is equal to roughly 3.99 meters per second. So that's going to represent the final velocity of the orange disk. Now, since we have VOF, all we have to do is plug that back into our original equation that we boxed in, and that's going to allow us to solve for VGF. And then once we multiply these two numbers in our calculator, we can see that VGF is roughly equal to 3.01 meters per second. So that's going to represent the final velocity of the green disk. So both final velocities have been solved for.